Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So what the heck is Imbaru? Two days ago we got the seasonal story drop about Savathun having an Imbaru engine and we got to see it for ourselves. A confusing chamber full of chests that would either kill us or seemingly do nothing. Today I wanted to explain what this chamber is for as well as what the concept of Imbaru is. Old lore on this topic came from the Truth to Power lore book, which is notoriously untrustworthy. But now, perhaps, given that it's got extra sources in-game, we can say more about what Imbaru is. I hope. Ah, maybe this sentence is Imbaru. Damn if that's the case. But first, check this out. This is my new desk mat. I've been using it for a few weeks now and it looks spectacular. The colours in particular came out great. And that's kind of tricky considering that whenever you do get mats and t-shirts and all this other stuff going on, sometimes colours that blend together turn out blotchy and as blocks and it's just not great. That being said, this looks excellent and it was made by friends of the channel and sponsor of this video, Advanced GG. You can go ahead and grab them now, they're launching over on their site which you can visit at the link in the description. While you're there, you might also want to consider picking up some of the gaming supplements and ice shakers. If you're in the UK, we also have stock of my own snazzy laser etched ones, which I have here at home, and seriously, this thing is awesome. The detail on it is pristine. And as for their gaming formula, if you are one of the thousands that have already tried it, you don't need me to tell you that Advanced GG has amazing benefits. For those of you who haven't though, let's just say that there's a reason why I trust them as opposed to any other gaming formula. Sometimes gaming supplements have really dubious ingredients and products, and it's not really known if they provide that much benefit. However, Advanced GG is the only FDA-approved gaming supplement, and it's known to be a great product because it provides a stable 4-6 to six hour boost of energy that doesn't have a nasty crash at the end. Personally, I know this from experience because I used it in the challenge and contest version of Crota, the one that just released. And I can say that it absolutely helped me get through that tough raid race. It improves your gaming focus and decision making, it helps you keep in the moment, and it reduces your error rate. Seriously, try this stuff out, it's excellent. If you want to go ahead and grab any of this, check out my link below to get to their store, and remember that you can use code BIFE or code LAWDADDY to get 10% off. That's BIFE with a capital B and LAWDADDY with a capital L and D and no space. That'll get you 10% off at their store. Thanks again to Advance to GG for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. So, to explain Imbaru, I think we can actually look at the more contemporary explanation of it given by Ikora in the Eliatic Principal machine gun from this season. Thank goodness this is here too, because otherwise I would be needing to lead with Truth to Power, which I'm not confident in doing. That being said, it's entirely possible this understanding of Imbaru is based in truth to power. We just don't know. All that being said, here's Ikora's explanation. She breaks it down in a far simpler manner. Explanation leads to contradiction. Sender, Ikora Ray 006. Subject, Understanding. Zavathun didn't construct her spire for light and logic alone. There is more to this than meets the eye. That's the crux of it. What is Imbaru? Asking the question yields an ounce of tribute by itself. Failing to answer it yields more. It's impossible to engage with the concept without falling into the web of cunning devised by the Witch Queen, even after her death. It's elegant and irritating. We are familiar with the sword logic, the need to endure and force the universe to endure you. It is a contest. When there is nothing left to stand but you, then you've won. Your prize is existence. But Imbaru is tribute from the failure to understand. When Savathun ensnared us with her cunning, she fed her worm. Every false step or mistake in our attempts to unravel Savathun's plans gave her exactly what she wanted. Whenever someone believed a lie or doubted a truth, she became that much more powerful. We might think we know what we're doing here, but in many ways I doubt we do. There will be ripples from Eris' actions. We can't predict what waves she'll make. Message ends. So yeah, I think that Ikora gives the simplest explanation there. 
Imbaru is tribute from the failure to understand. It works like this. Savathun needs to feed her worm with cunning, trickery, and deception. In doing so, she becomes stronger and abides by the sword logic, and if she is stronger, she will be able to survive until the end of the universe, and thus she will be victorious, Ayat. She might not have a worm anymore, but we know that she still becomes stronger and can become stronger through the sword logic without a worm, by obeying the sword logic anyway. Just take a look at Hyrax and Eris Morn, for example. Worms are not a necessary component of the sword logic, just something that the hive came with. Imbaru feeds into all of this because it's part of how Savathun obeys the sword logic and her nature. It's a way for her to prove that she's more cunning than those around her. Imbaru is a sort of rigid, manifest proof of that cunning. If you misunderstand something that Savathun does, you've proven that Savathun has more cunning than you, and thus you empower her. That simple act of misunderstanding is Imbaru. The thing is that this simple act of misunderstanding something about the Witch Queen can occur in any number of ways. If I explain Imbaru to you, but I explain the principle incorrectly for some reason, as I did way back hurriedly in the days when I first read through Truth to Power in the Forsaken Era of Destiny, then yeah, that misunderstanding has created Imbaru. Imbaru can also be created by believing a lie or doubting a truth. The inability to have the whole picture, the inability to see someone else's perspective, the lack of all the evidence, the lack of truth, the lack of understanding whether a lie is true or not, the belief of a lie, the doubt of truth, an incompleteness of knowledge generally is what creates power for Savathun, because you are proving with that incompleteness of knowledge that you are less cunning than her. This is why Ikora says that examining and explaining Imbaru is necessary because if it's explained, it creates a small scale of tribute, but it would be worse for someone to know absolutely nothing about Imbaru because it creates more. You cannot engage with Imbaru without being drawn into it. Your ignorance at the very outset of learning about the word for the first time is the weapon that Savathun can use most effectively. And even when you do learn about it, it still haunts you because all of a sudden, all of your other ignorances, yeah, you're just starting to realize that those might be causing Imbaru. And so you might look at them more closely. Even just the act of doubting that truth that you thought was potentially solid and foundational, yeah, even if it is still solid and foundational, that creates Imbaru. You see why this is the problem and how genius this is? And how terrifying it is to think about it. The genius is undeniable. Savathun has basically weaponized the asymmetry of information itself and the ignorance that comes with it. Effectively, as long as we still have questions, and as long as Savathun is still mysterious to us in some way, she will always have power over us and she'll always be able to pull Imbaru from our actions. That is undeniably terrifying. So, we've kind of gone over what Imbaru is. Where did we first learn about it, and why has it always been such a touchy subject? Well, like I said earlier, enter Truth to Power. I've talked about it a few times before, but this law book is madness. I've heard people call it brain poison. I've heard people call it genius. I've heard people call it pointless. Regardless of where you stand on the nature of the book, it holds the first ever mention of the term Imbaru. I'm going to remind you all that there's no guarantee this actually happened, what I'm about to read from the book. In fact, Eris Morn, who is mentioned in it, refutes a lot of what happens in Truth to Power. It mentions her frequently, and there is not much evidence that any of it happened according to Eris's own testimony. It should be noted at this point that the same can be said for most things in Truth to Power no matter where they come from. Don't trust anything in this book to have actually happened. With that said, here's what happened according to the law book. Upon reading through the law entries, we, as in us, our guardian, start to hallucinate. The law book sends us in a sort of choose-your-own-adventure style journey set in the tower as you hallucinate. If you choose the correct outcomes, your perspective will suddenly shift from the strange surroundings of the tower to a new place altogether. In this new space, Eris Morn is being held in suspension. The daughter of Savathun, Dulin Karu, who lords over the curse of the Dreaming City from the Shattered Throne, then arrives and asks Eris if she wishes to know about Savathun or not. She then goes on to tell Eris more about Savathun's plan to gather tribute, as well as what Eris's supposed destiny might be according to what Savathun has devised. 
ominous now that I reread that. You know, this idea that Savathun had planned some kind of destiny for Eris, the mention of Imbaru and the appearance of an Imbaru engine as Eris starts to turn into a hive god? Yeah, that's all a little freaky. The passage eventually leads to this text that I'm going to read in a moment. It features a hive thrall of Savathun's brood being led into Savathun's High Coven, the equivalent of the Court of Oryx for the Witch Queen herself, and they're asked to attempt to comprehend Savathun's great plan. Before reading this section, just a little bit more context. Dulinkaru states that Savathun had taken some of her ascendant hive that were beneath her, which were also starving for tribute, and had thrown them into the close orbit of a singularity, where time passed much slower because of the way that space-time's curvature and all of the gravity around the singularity was being affected. In this way, the worms of those ascendants began to feed more slowly on their tribute because they were slower. You know, they were existing in a place where time wasn't passing at the same speed. Their forces on the exterior that tithed to them gathered it at the same rate, but they consumed it at a slower rate. However, the worms of the Ascendant Hive quickly realized the trickery born of this singularity and simply demanded more tribute. Thus, Savathun came up with a new plan. That plan is explained in the first half of the thank you entry in the Truth to Power law book. That particular bit of brain poison reads as follows. Verse 154i4 Call the Thrall From a random crypt, Savathun selected a young thrall and summoned it into the High Coven. It came hesitantly, fearing death, but nonetheless it came. Come, come, snapped Savathun. Listen as I reveal unto you my design. You are aware that gravity is the curvature of space-time, and where gravity is powerful, time itself slows. The thrall indicated that it understood, more or less, for it was a singer of prayers and not well fed with the fruit of the knowledge of physics. Now, I have tried to put an ascendant in orbit of a black hole while its spawn gather the tribute of an eon, but the worm is not satisfied, for it sees the trick. What I must do is amplify the speed at which tribute is gathered. A pocket world where time passes quickly would do well, or a world where time is a torus and infinite violence must be gathered. With such a murder battery, I could become a being of supreme insight. The thrall indicated it was confused, but not lost. With this tribute, I shall undertake a mighty work, a real humdinger of a scheme. I'm going to refinance my entire existence. I'm going to move from an existential economy based on the accumulation of violence to an existential economy based on the accumulation of secrets and the tribute of failing to understand me. I shall name this tribute of failing to understand Imbaru, for it shall be as formless as the mist. The thrall held up its claw as if to say, please slow down. Now spoke Savathun, scheme mother. In the beginning, you'll said to me, Savathun, you may never abandon cunning. If you do, your worm shall devour you. Cunning is the use of thought to predict the function of a system. Therefore, wherever a being should attempt to understand me and fail, has my cunning not defeated theirs? Wherever a falsehood is repeated about me, have I not displayed cunning? I shall gather tribute from every false prediction, misguided theory, fearful rumor, and ominous supposition which derives from the thought of me. And in time, I shall pin my quiddity upon these rumors. I shall discorporate so that I exist wherever my schemes and conspiracies also exist. And so, I will be immortal, as long as anyone seeks to understand me and fails. Do you see? The thrall demurred, saying that it did not know much of metaphysics. Good, said Savathun. It's a law of the High Coven that one's sinister plan should be incomprehensible to a thrall. Do you know why we've come here? If I am to take my tribute from the keeping of secrets, where else are secrets better kept than beneath the event horizon? My brother ruled that flat space of infinity... But I prefer these tide-washed depths, and in time, I shall make them my dominion. 
Oh, the ever hunger heard this and was pleased. This passage here is the first time where we ever hear about Imbaru, and the fact that we hear about it first in a law book that is deliberately lying to you over and over again so that you don't understand the complete picture, thus creating Imbaru in the process? Man, that's kind of genius, isn't it? Because again, the lack of our exact understanding of the truth has created Imbaru. Thus, you know, the book has opened a trap and let you walk right into it. It's fascinating. It's an act of Imbaru in itself. Certainly one that got me back in the day. All of this brings us back to the Imbaru engine, though, that we find in the Oubliette. The very existence of this thing is designed as a sort of trap. To speculate and talk about the Imbaru engine creates Imbaru because we don't know everything about it. The name implies that it's there to create Imbaru, but if you break down that statement and that idea, even that is an assumption. The name of the Imbaru engine might simply be there as a secondary distracting notion, and whilst in the process of that it might create Imbaru, it might be the case that even this is obfuscation. Imagine if this is something completely different and it's just named the Imbaru engine to distract us, as many things might be in the realm of Savathun where everything is made specifically to deceive you. All of that being said, let's commit some Imbaru right here and right now, and let's speculate about how this machine works, and let's make that big first assumption that yes, this is here to create Imbaru. So, first of all, the Imbaru engine is possibly called an engine because it's designed to generate immense amounts of power for Savathun, and the creation of Imbaru here is not simply accomplished by those who take part in the rituals within its chamber, but also by those that merely hear about it. Not understanding what the Imbaru engine is, is in itself an act of Imbaru. So, yeah, there's that to first understand. Misunderstanding even the basic geometry of this place, which is set as a cube that has no correlation to correct gravity, will also cause you to commit Imbaru. Getting lost or misled as you navigate its walls, floors, and ceilings will also lead to Imbaru, as you prove that you haven't fully comprehended Savathun's internal machine and the lies that it seems to tell, whether those lies are the way that you might navigate from the top of the chamber to the bottom, or whether you understand how gravity works in this thing. On that note, the strange architecture of the Imbaru engine seems to suggest that gravity spills out inversely from a point at its center. Even as we still have to hold our feet on the ground normally, the pendulums swinging according to their own laws of physics up above us, yeah, they seem to imply that there's something else going on and it makes us question what's really happening with gravity. It's also worth remembering that these might just be illusions or manipulations based on hive magics. If they are, you know, that makes a certain degree of sense, but then again, Savathun was previously talking about the gravity of singularities and black holes. As a result, it's not impossible to believe that some of that use of physics is being put to use here. Again, even just talking about this, as you can hear with the doubt in my voice, is an act of Imbaru. Ah, I love and hate this, it's terrible. Most curious of all, though, is the objective and the rewards found within the engine itself. The engine challenges guardians, or whoever should enter into it, to pick the correct hive rune that matches to the corresponding chest. For those of you wondering, it's the one that looks like an X with a stake through it, as opposed to the one that looks more like a jellyfish. Failing to do this correctly kills the guardian and drops a buff on them called Imbaru, which lasts for three seconds before they die. You can also hear Savathun's laughter and you'll see a prompt in the chat saying that Savathun has been empowered. Should you succeed at the trials though, your reward is nothing, but you do get a pop-up in the chat with every single attempt that you make successfully saying that you have proven your cunning, and when you have completed the small section of the Imbaru engine you get a pop-up saying, you have conjured cunning. Those words I think are a very deliberately chosen set of words, and the reason I say that is because of what happened in the Books of Sorrow. I talked about it last video, but after the war for the Ecumen had had its tide turned and Oryx had turned into the Taken King, he first embodied Zivu Arath by committing war for some great amount of time. And in doing so, Zivu Arath was resurrected and said, I am war and you have conjured me back with war. Note the word conjured. 
This also happened to Savathun after Oryx tricked the remainder of the Acumene and led them into a trap. From this moment, Savathun was risen again and she said, I am trickery and you have conjured me back with trickery. Again, note those words, conjured. The implication here is that no matter how you engage with the Imbaru engine, Savathun wins. Either you succeed and you conjure cunning, which then embodies her and gives tribute to her in that sense, or alternatively, you have failed to understand Savathun's mind and have given her a great tithe of Imbaru through your ignorance. No matter what happens, the Witch Queen seems to win. Our inability to comprehend the engine is something that we should take very seriously, but I think it's also worth noting that we haven't fully understood it because not all of it has fully opened up to us. It's an elegant design of a machine because everything about it makes us question it, but also I feel as though the more that we delve into its secrets, the more we may be able to peel away the layers of the Witch Queen's deception. It's very clear to me, given how long it takes to complete the Imbaru engine, that we are not done with it yet. If we were, I would be astounded, because this clearly has a role to play and there's clearly stuff that we just haven't found out about it yet. What other secrets might lie within, perhaps we'll find out more in time, but for the moment, we just have to keep in mind that whenever we engage with the Imbaru engine, we are creating a dangerous circumstance. All that being said, continue to explore and look for secrets within. The sooner we understand the true nature of that place, the sooner we can disarm it as a threat. But that's all from me for now. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, and if you want more Destiny content from Season of the Witch and from Final Shape as it comes along, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership as always is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.